Hi flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and I am in my basement grow room. It's been about a month since I showed you guys my seedlings and I thought I would give you guys another tour down here since things have grown kind of out of control. I'm down here joined by my 10 year old boxer blooper. You might hear some noises. Uh, you probably will hear some noises from her mouth because every time I talk to the camera, she wants to be to be talking to her and she, oh, she's laying on the floor now, so she's fine. Okay, so this is shelf one. I have five shelves. There are a lot of tomatoes, so I'm not going to be showing you every single variety of tomato in your face, but I will give you a general overview of the tomatoes. So the tomatoes a couple weeks ago, I noticed the ones that I did not start in Fort B, the ones that I had potted up into the peat pots and also the old recycled milk cartons, they looked like they were struggling. The leaves were turning yellow. They just were not thriving. So we kind of determined that they weren't getting enough nutrients, even though I was feeding them with weak treatments of Neptune's harvest which is a fertilizer I was watering them once a week with that fertilizer inside of it turns out they wanted more so I took them out of those pots and I got rid of them so by transplanting them out of the pots that they were in and putting them into new mix a new soil mixture with some compost they're much happier they've recovered in just two weeks they look delicious and green and full and lush and a crazy difference between just because of the soil uh, obviously guys soil is most important when you're growing things so these look so much better here is one oh see there's like cords and stuff i'm gonna break something in here Woo! almost dropped it this is one of the trays that we potted up. This we put into two inch soil blocks. We didn't even put it into a new tray. We just made two inch soil blocks and shoved it down in there. So I'm gonna put this back. This is just a fraction of the tomatoes. I think I counted them up. I think I have 800 tomato seedlings and they're quite large. Over here is where a lot of them are being held. Kind of looks like a little red light special. We're gonna shut that off just so you guys can see the beautifulness of these plants and perhaps my greatest tomato success this year are the black crim tomatoes these never had an issue because i actually started these in the fort v mix i started them in two or the three quarter inch there's like seven eighths or whatever inch soil blocks and then i potted them up when they were little into the two inch soil blocks and if i could separate one of these and bring it up i'll show you guys just how great each individual plant is O M G so big. Oh. So the plants are actually starting to produce little baby flowers. Now I'm going to tell my customers that when they take this home in this two inch soil block, I want them to plant it like that deep. I want them to plant it really deep because you could take all of these little side shoots off which I will, and then bury it as far up as you can. And they're just really nice, thick, sturdy stems. They're great looking plants. So those ones are the black crim. The rest of these are the San Marzano's. Well, those are like the best ones you can get for making sauce and canning and stuff like that. There's also some Romas, some triple crops. Uh, there's some cherry tomatoes. They're kind of all scattered. I have five uh, rows of shelving units here and uh, they're dead. So my seedling sale is set for May 15th and I do have a lot of people interested in the tomatoes. So hopefully we'll be good. Okay, let's go over the rest of the stuff on this first shelving unit right here. I've got some cucumbers that I'm gonna be selling at my seedling sale. I've got a muncher variety and then an early Russian cucumber. And my seedling sale is about 10 days away now. So maybe 10 or 11 days away. So those will be perfect for the sale. Here is an update on the Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus on this end. This is a 50 cell plug tray. And on this end is Sweet Annie, which is a filler and it is so sweet. Even as a seedling, it just smells so amazing. I'm very excited for these. I cannot wait to get them into the ground. If you've never grown Sweet Annie before, I would just grow it just to put my face in it all the time. And this, I just, I'm very excited about these. These are nice plants. These are a nice size even to transplant out, but um, I'm gonna hold them for a couple more weeks until our frost threat has gone. Here's a look at a couple of the Jessica dahlias that I started from seed. Now they're called Jessica dahlias because the seeds were given to me by my sister. 
Jessica. And Jessica was duped by one of those photoshopped dahlias. It was a, she thought she was buying a neon blue dahlia and uh, it was one of those photoshopped things. Anyway, these are close to pinching stage. I would totally pinch this right here. And uh, you can actually see the new growth coming out from right where I would pinch it. And then once you pinch these tops out, you can even root the, like a cutting, you can root it and grow a whole new plant just from the top that you pinch off. I'll be doing that later this week. I'm gonna let this one grow a little bit taller before I pinch it. So these are just two of the pots. I have two more and I think that's down on shelving unit five. So it'll be a minute. So when you guys grow dahlias from seed, each seed is not gonna be true to the mother plant. It's gonna be its very own variety, something new. And if you save the tubers, because the dahlias that you grow from seed will make tubers. And if you save those tubers, they'll be true to the mother plant. So, and if you want the same variety that you're growing, you have to use the tubers. The seeds will be something random, which is how new varieties are discovered all the time. So it's exciting to try from seed, but most of the ones grown from seed are not good cut flowers, but they are really pretty. I got a lot more tomatoes down here. I also have what I would call a seed failure because I started these on Easter and I only got out of 300, I think I had 10, 10 started. Not good, horrible. In fact, I think the seed is bad because I started them again a couple of weeks ago. I just dumped the rest, like 200 other seeds, just dumped it in and I only got maybe 20, 25 seedlings to emerge and these are the straw flower seeds. So out of several hundred, I only got a couple of dozen seedlings and I think it's just old seed. The seed packet was a couple of years old. This was the Sultane mix and they were Johnny's seeds and the germination rate on them last year was great, but this year it's not so hot. This is a silvery rose straw flower. This is also last year's seed, it had a much better germination rate. It's not great, but it's not that bad. Here we have a tray of cinnamon basil. Cinnamon basil is really amazing filler. And my customers really love it. I honestly don't even think that it smells like cinnamon. It does, it smells something. I'm getting like Luden's cough drop. I smell Luden's cough drop when I smell it. This is a tray of hens and chick poppy. Hens and chicks poppy. I saw it in the Baker Creek catalog and I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. It has this really unique looking head, you know, after the petals drop, even when it's got the petals on it, it's great, but you don't grow these things for the cut flower. You grow them for the pod that it leaves behind after the petals shed off the flower. And I thought this was a really cool looking pod. So I'm trying this out this year, hens and chick poppy. I have a few more trays of tomatoes and then this is the tray of the mums that I received from King's Mums. I unboxed them in a video last week and I potted them up and they all look fantastic. This is a tray of summer squash for my seedling sale. And then these are long hot peppers also for my seedling sale. We just potted these up into these pots yesterday. They were started in 50 plug trays and they're great. I love long hots. Stuff them. It's thick down here. Okay, now on to shelving unit number two. We have a lot of different stuff on here. We do have a couple of trays of tomatoes. I'm not gonna show you those, but we also have some uh, of the warm weather crop, stuff that I did not have in the first tour, including this amaranth. This is a ton of amaranth. I have emerald tassels, red spike amaranth, which was one of my favorites last year. And I only grew one plant last year and I have like 50 of them here. They were my favorite. And then right here is the Hopi Red Dye Amaranth. And then the Hot Biscuits. Hot Biscuits. I'm super excited. I mean, this is a ton of amaranth. I do not know where I'm going to plant this one yet. Okay, for this one, I think I'm going to move the camera and zoom in on some stuff so you guys can see it because I'm starting to sweat. Okay, so right there I have in the front, right there I have some Dara. My camera's not gonna wanna focus on it. Oh, there we go, Dara, which is like an Ami dill, really pretty. And then right beyond that, and right here I have some yellow euphorbia. This came from Florette. That's a look at the Genovese basil that I have, really going well. I've started to pinch the basil too. Right here in this first white tray, I have some aster, that's the apricot asters. And then right behind it, that is a tray of eryngium. A little bit lower, we have a tray of gumfrina. This is orange gumfrina, and I have 78 out of 80 seedlings. That's crazy good germination. And then we have this tray. This is another tray of aster. This tray is the Valkyrie mix. This also had amazing germination. There's really only a few in here that did not take off. I'm really excited about these ones. I've never grown asters from seed before. Here we have, I think this is the lime basil. 
No. Yeah, it is. Lime basil just doesn't smell like lime yet. It's really, really distorted germination on this one. There's some that are like four inches tall and there are, the majority of them are just coming up. We have, this says that it's Cafe Cream Foxglove, but honestly, it doesn't look like Foxglove to me. It's got a very, very weird texture to the leaves, um, different than any of the other Foxgloves. And though it looks like there's one that's like a piece of grass growing up there. I have a nice tray of yarrow. I've got a few of these trays popping around here somewhere. And then I have my first, look at that ridiculously thickly sewn Snapdragons. That's okay. I just want to give it up one more time for this Basile. Oh God, it smells so good. Okay. Another tray of basil. I know I'm getting dark over here guys. Lighting is horrific. Purple, opal, basil, amazing. Oh, down here we have exciting things. This is a tray of, I think it's pink gumfrina. Nope, it's lilac. So this is a tray of lilac gumfrina. Super good looking plants, they good looking. This is a tray of bupleurum and I did not have very uh, good germination on this. You can't even see it. There's probably out of the one, two, three, four, five, 120 that I started, I probably have 30 seedlings. I guess that's okay. But um, I don't know. I just didn't get really great germination on the bupleurum this year. And bupleurum is a great filler. What is this? This is one of about a billion trays of status that I have. This is white status. Oh, this is another tray of straw flower and this had a really great germination. This is double tall, double tall straw flower. There's a tray of about a thousand snapdragons. I'll separate them out when I plant them. I'm not gonna take the time to separate them out now. When, they're, when I'm planting them, I'll put like two in a hole and they'll be good to go. Ooh, this is a tray of some good looking cucumber plants. These are mighty fine. Really happy about these. These are six packs of cucumbers for my customers. Oh, they smell so good. <laughs> this is a tray of 200 star flowers. Star flowers are so cool. Um, I can't believe I have this many. Mm. 200. A Dusty Miller update. It's doing fantastic. Starting to actually look like Dusty Miller. Are you licking float water? I spilled some water on the floor and she's licking it up. Thank you. Dusty Miller. Tis a tray of gumfrina. This we have mm, the Audre White gumfrina, which was my favorite last year, did not have great germination, but Fireworks gumfrina that someone sent me, thank you so much, has amazing germination. And Audre Purple Red, which I purchased, also has great germination. So gonna have a lot of gonfrina, which is good because I have plans for it. Here's an update on my two eucalyptus that are good. They're both, they still look great. And they're about, well, this one's kind of growing sideways, but it's doing it well. And this one's growing up, also doing it well. I'm not gonna complain. I have two eucalyptus and they, they look better than last year's. More basil. This is actually the Genovese basil. The one that I showed you earlier is lemon lime. I don't know how I screwed that up. They're, they look completely different. Here we have status. This is a rose colored status. And then this one is super crest celosia. I'm gonna have a lot of celosia this year. Pompous plume celosia. It's amazing. Some people say celosia. I say celosia because I like saying it that way. I started a tray of cosmos. I think a bunch of different ones too, yep. Uh, apricot lemonade, fizzy rose picote, and then double click cranberry cosmos, just a bunch. And I will direct seed some of these as well and uh, probably start some more trays because I have a lot of cosmos. This is a tray of an ageratum mix. Ageratum, timeless ageratum mix. They all look really good. This is a 50 plug tray of dahlias from seed. Um, half of them are the dahlias from Florette and I only have maybe four or five uh, six, seven. Seven out of the 25 did not germinate. And then over here, this is the Unwins. Uh, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
six out of the 25 out of, did not germinate. So these are the dahlias from seed. So we'll see what they do. I'll plant them out in a few weeks. This is a tray of Kilimanjaro white marigolds. And I really, <laughs> I think it's hysterical because yes, they're all white except for this. You can't see it. This one seedling back here has a purple stem. The rest of them are all white. And then the one, it's like, which one of these is not like the other? Which one of these just doesn't belong? This is African daisies. I got these from Baker Creek and I really love the way that they look. I'm hoping that they're easy to separate. You just pull one out and plant it. And I can actually probably plant these very soon outside. They don't mind the the cold and we're not going to get any more deep freezes i don't think if you look at the extended forecast our frost date is about two and a half weeks away and the extended forecast shows it not really going below 35 so we will see should be able to plant some of these things out whoops dropped it more slosia this is the feather flamingo flat feather not great germination on that you know what i can't say that i can see that they're germinated but the seed heads are not popping off so these are not growing bigger because the seed hat, maybe I needed to miss them, but my Mr. Mr. broke, guys. It broke. And then I have over here the more pompous plume celosia, and that's amazing germination. So I don't know why these would do so well and have the seed heads pop off, and then these would not do so well. It's, it's hard to, it's not gonna focus. This right here is the pink Chinese forget-me-nots, and this is a tray of oregano. I'm loving it. Mm, it smells so good. Pastel blue status, double tall straw flowers. They want to be outside right now. They're starting to get yellow leaves at the bottom. Texas plume celosia, and this is a tray of, what's it say? Carmine gonfrina. Carmine gonfrina. Dill. I love the way dill is so. It moves in the wind. Mmm. -hmm. Here we have Strawberry Fields Gunfrina. This was a packet I also uh, lost, but then found. And then this is White Tall, oh, both of these. So I lost these packets. Turns out they were in my laptop bag for work. So this is a white straw flower, amazing germination, but it's also brand new seed. And then this is the Strawberry Fields Gunfrina, which is one of my favorites. Cardinal Basil, this was fun. This was from uh, Baker Creek. And this is a tray of zinnias on a snowman plate. Guys, when I run out of trays, I use whatever I have. This is a Christmas snowman plate, and I couldn't even find room to, it doesn't have an, enough of an edge to label it, so some of the labels are on the bottom, <laughs> whatever. So I just wanted to get some zinnias started, and there's about 100 of them on this tray. These are trays of apricot, yellow, and blue status. These are growing really well. These want to get outside. Same, same z's, same z's, so good. Here are the other two Jessica Dahlias from Seed. They both look good. This is my tray of scabiosa. There are a whole bunch of different kinds of scabiosa and I love scabiosa. It's one of those great little pops of color and texture in bouquets. I love it. Snapdragon. <laughs> People have been telling me they have poor germination on their snapdragons and I just don't understand. Ah, so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud. Supercrest celosia. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with all the celosia. This is a tray of winged mobium, and it's not loving it. It's not loving life anymore. I think it wants to be outside. So I'm gonna see if I can plant this outside yet, or if it needs to be. I mean, some of them look amazing. Like some of these seedlings look great, and then others have uh, like a low, well, you know what? I think I know why. I didn't thin it. So there's like six plants there. It's just not loving being packed so tightly in. So when I plant these out, I will thin them, and then perhaps they will be happier plants, but. Like that one that I just showed you that's really happy is a single plant. So I'm sure that's why. They're just crowded. Sorry, guys. Here is a tray of eggplants and uh, we have some nasturtiums over here. Now I have a ton of nasturtiums. I have several other flats of them and they're on the ground. So I'll show you guys what's on the ground next. So the other things that you might be like, where where is the rest of the stuff? Well, it's already been planted outside. So things like the Rubecchia, the stock, the snapdragons, the original round, because these snapdragons that I'm showing you now are the second round of snapdragons. And let's see, fever fuse in the ground, um, the foxglove is in the ground for the most part. So those are things that I'm gonna have to do an outside tour to give you guys updates on because those things needed to get in the ground ASAP.
And then the other stuff that's outside right now, I have the Lysianthus outside and the Dianthus outside, um, the sweet peas, several other things that are outside hardening off and they will be in the ground this week. This week, going in the ground. In fact, I think I'm planting the Lysianthus later today. So you guys should see that in a video coming up soon. Of course, I'm, going, I'm doing, I'm doing so much that I can't possibly make a video on everything that I'm doing. So I'm trying to fit that in when I can. It's been an absolutely insane week. It's been so much getting everything harvested and, and doing my Mother's Day sales and my CSAs and getting the seeds started because yesterday I spent hours planting seeds. So what did I start? Zinnias. So I started half of the zinnias that I'll be putting into the ground this year and there are a ton of them guys. They're on my heat mat right now. I'm going to do a separate zinnia video because I have some clips from Sunflower Steve over how he direct seeds has he plants so many it's hard to wrap your head around. But remember he has that massive field of just zinnia. So you'll see that video coming up later this week. So down here in the grow room, I have a dehumidifier set up because if I didn't, it was getting too humid in here. It was up to 86, 87%. The tomato plants were getting edema, which is where they hold on to too much water in their stems and they start to bubble up and you can actually see the bubbling on their skin. And if you touch it, it kind of pops. It doesn't really hurt the plant, but it can lead to issues if you don't take care of it. So I have a dehumidifier running down here, bringing it down to about 68% humidity. And I also have an oscillating fan running and I have one on both ends. They're off right now because they make a lot of noise and I didn't want it to be interrupting the video but I do have a fan on stuff and that will blow the plants get them sturdy and hardy and ready to be outdoors because if you don't have wind or air movement on your plants and then you put them outside into an environment that's not perfect like this one and a windstorm comes through they can easily break if they're not used to having any sort of resistance on them it's early in the morning and I'm already ready for a nap I took a nap in the peonies the other day I did took a nap in the peonies and it was quite pleasant. I'll be doing an outside tour I think this week because my peonies are looking real good and I want you guys to see the tulips before they fade out. The humidity is sneaking back up in here so I'm gonna turn the fan back on, turn my dehumidifier back on, and I'm gonna head outside for the rest of the day. So thank you guys so much for sticking around. We'll see you soon. These beauties are morning glories. This was a gift of seed packet with gift from Creatively Candice. They just look so good, super happy. I have a, a third tray of them as well. Here is a tray of the nasturtiums. They're very happy. I absolutely adore them and I cannot wait to get them out in the garden. Um, this stack of trays right here, guys, these are all the pumpkins that I am selling for the seedling sale. We have a whole bunch of different varieties. We have white ones, we have green ones, we have baby ones, and we have regular jack-o'-lantern ones and I'm very excited and I hope that people are interested in buying pumpkins. Otherwise, I'm gonna have the biggest pumpkin patch in the history of patches at my house. One, two, three, four, five, five times 20, 100. I'm a mathematician. I'm sweating down here. Really good looking. They're so fuzzy. They look dusty. <laughs> There's some dog hair on them too. Shocking. Can you even see how cool they are? Can you see up my nose? <laughs> it's not a big deal. But it's a deal. It's not a big deal. Can't see myself. Flippity flippity flop. Flippity flip flop. Flip flop. Flip flop. Okay. Oh, and if you were, if you watched my unboxing video of my stuff from Brushwood Nursery, the wisteria, look how it's starting to branch out already. It was just a stick when I opened it up, a green stick. But being down here in the grow room, it's already putting out crazy shoots. I'm very excited. They both are, and uh, the clematis also looks great as well. But those are Mother's Day gifts, so. Which one of these is not like the other? Which one of these just doesn't belong?